Comprehensive Guide to Lumbar Canal Stenosis. The video is created by Dr. Abhinav Gupta and team. In this video we have covered everything about the topic from initiation to the end. It is characterized by the narrowing of the spinal canal in the lumbar, lower, region of the spine. This narrowing put pressure on the spinal cord and nerves, leading to a range of symptoms. Classification of Lumbar Canal Stenosis 1. Generalized versus Segmental Stenosis Generalized stenosis refers to uniform narrowing of the entire lumbar spinal canal. Segmental stenosis involves localized or segment-specific narrowing, often affecting specific levels of the lumbar spine. 2. Anatomical classification. Central canal stenosis involves narrowing of the central canal where the spinal cord passes. Lateral recess stenosis narrowing of the openings, lateral recesses, on either side of the spinal canal where nerve roots exit. 3. Pathological classification, congenital stenosis, present from birth due to structural abnormalities. Acquired stenosis, develops later in life, often associated with degenerative changes, disc herniation, or spinal arthritis. 4. Other causes, hypertrophy of ligamentum flavum, thickening of the ligament in the spinal canal. Facet joint hypertrophy, enlargement of the facet joints contributing to canal narrowing. Disc herniation, protrusion of the intervertebral disc material into the spinal canal. Clinical features of lumbar canal stenosis. 1. Neurogenic claudication. Pain, numbness, or weakness in the legs, often provoked by walking or standing and relieved by sitting or bending forward. 2. Radicular pain. Pain radiating into the buttocks and legs due to compression of nerve roots. 3. Back pain. Discomfort or pain in the lower back, especially with activity. 4. Leg weakness. Weakness in the legs, which may affect walking and balance. 5. Numbness and tingling. Sensations of numbness, tingling, or a, pins and needles, feeling in the lower extremities. 6. Reduced range of motion. Difficulty bending backward, extension. 7. Symptoms alleviated by forward bending. Relief of symptoms when leaning forward or sitting, which opens up the spinal canal and reduces pressure on nerves. 8. Bowel or bladder dysfunction, severe cases. In rare and severe cases, lumbar canal stenosis can lead to bowel or bladder dysfunction, indicating a potential compression of the corda equina. Stoop test for lumbar canal stenosis. The stoop test is a clinical examination used to assess individuals with suspected lumbar canal stenosis. It involves observing the patient's response to forward bending, which can temporarily alleviate symptoms associated with lumbar canal stenosis. Procedure 1. Stand. Ask the patient to stand upright. 2. Observe. Observe the patient for any signs of discomfort or symptoms, such as leg pain or neurogenic claudication. 3. Forward bend. Instruct the patient to bend forward at the waist, attempting to touch their toes or reach as far down as possible. 4. Observe again. Note any changes in symptoms during forward bending, such as relief of leg pain or improvement in walking ability. Interpretation. Positive stoop test. If the patient experiences relief of symptoms during forward bending, it may suggest lumbar canal stenosis. This positional change temporarily opens up the spinal canal, relieving pressure on the nerves. Investigations. 1. MRI. Provide images of the spinal structures, visualization of the spinal canal, nerve roots, and any abnormalities, such as disc herniation or ligamentum flavum hypertrophy. 2. CT. Computed tomography. Scan. Useful for visualizing bony structures, detecting any bone spurs or hypertrophy of facet joints contributing to canal stenosis. 3. X-rays may reveal degenerative changes in the spine, such as osteoarthritis, and can help assess alignment and stability. 4. Myelography involves injecting contrast dye into the spinal canal, followed by X-rays or CT scans.
This can provide detailed images of the spinal cord and nerve roots. 5. Electromyography, EMG, and nerve conduction studies may be conducted to assess nerve function and identify any abnormalities. Treatment other than physiotherapy for lumbar canal stenosis. 1. Medications, pain relievers, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, or acetaminophen for pain control. Muscle relaxants, to alleviate muscle spasms. Anti-seizure medications, some medications can help manage nerve-related pain. 2. Epidural steroid injections, administering corticosteroids into the epidural space to reduce inflammation and provide temporary relief of symptoms. 3. Orthotic devices, lumbar braces or supports may be used to provide external support and stability. 4. Minimally invasive procedures, laminectomy, surgical removal of a portion of the vertebral bone, lamina, to relieve pressure on the spinal cord or nerves. Foraminotomy, enlarging the neural foramen to relieve pressure on nerve roots. Laminoplasty, creating more space within the spinal canal by preserving the lamina. 5. Decompression surgery, surgical procedures that aim to decompress the spinal canal and alleviate nerve compression. This may involve removing bone, ligamentum flavum, or disc material. 6. Spinal fusion. In some cases, fusion surgery may be considered to stabilize the spine, especially if there is significant instability. The choice of treatment depends on the severity of symptoms, the underlying causes, and the patient's overall health. Physiotherapy plays a crucial role in managing lumbar canal stenosis by addressing symptoms, improving function, and enhancing overall quality of life. The focus is on exercises, education, and other interventions aimed at reducing pain, increasing flexibility, and promoting stability. Here's a comprehensive approach. 1. Posture education. Emphasize proper posture during daily activities to reduce stress on the lumbar spine. Education on ergonomics at home and work is essential. 2. Core stabilization exercises. Develop an exercise program to strengthen the core muscles, including the transversus abdominis and multifidus, to provide better support to the lumbar spine. 3. Flexibility exercises. Target stretching exercises for tight muscles, particularly in the hip flexors and hamstrings, to improve flexibility and reduce lumbar curvature. 4. Aerobic conditioning. Prescribe low-impact aerobic exercises, such as walking or swimming, to promote cardiovascular health without exacerbating symptoms. 5. Gait training. Focus on optimizing walking mechanics, ensuring proper foot placement, and promoting an efficient gait pattern. 6. Neuromuscular re-education. Incorporate exercises that enhance neuromuscular control, coordination, and balance to improve functional mobility. 7. Strengthening exercises. Design a progressive strengthening program for the muscles supporting the lumbar spine, including the extensors, abductors, and lateral stabilizers. 8. Breathing exercises. Emphasize diaphragmatic breathing to improve respiratory function and promote better thoracic mobility. 9. Education on body mechanics. Instruct the individual on proper body mechanics, teaching techniques for safe lifting, bending, and carrying objects. 10. Modalities for pain management. Utilize modalities such as heat or cold therapy, ultrasound, or TENS, transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, for pain relief. 11. Aquatic therapy. Water-based exercises can provide a buoyant environment, reducing the impact on joints while promoting movement and muscle activation. 12. Patient-Centered Goals Collaborate with the individual to establish realistic and personalized goals for rehabilitation, considering their specific symptoms and lifestyle. 13. Home Exercise Program Provide a comprehensive home exercise program to encourage ongoing self-management and adherence to the prescribed exercises. 14. Assistive devices, if needed. 
Consider the use of assistive devices, such as a cane or walker, if mobility is compromised. 15. Pacing activities. Encourage the individual to pace activities and avoid overexertion, allowing for rest breaks during periods of increased symptoms. 16. Education on activity modification. Instruct on modifications to daily activities to minimize symptom exacerbation, including avoiding prolonged standing or walking. Physiotherapy aims to improve symptoms, functional capacity, and overall well-being. The treatment plan should be tailored to the individual's specific needs and coexisting conditions. Vote of thanks. Thank you for watching our video. We hope this information has been valuable to you. If you have any further questions or concerns, please consult our team for personalized advice.